Hey kids, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop, and we are so glad to have you with us tonight because we have a great guest. It's Pat Fraley. Oh, me. Yeah, you. Uh, exactly. Yes, I'm here. All right. And George and I are here, and you're here, and we'd love to get your questions into our Facebook chat room. So go in there and ask your questions of Pat Fraley, or if you got tech questions or any of that stuff. Right, George? Please give us your content so we have some. All right. Thank you. Voice over Body Shop with Pat Fraley coming up right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive. From their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are the guys. Well, hey there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Woodham. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. BS. All right. Well, we're still stuck at home here for another month. But the other day, I got so so tired of being in the house i figured i'm gonna get in my car and i'm gonna go visit george and you know i haven't seen you know I, i'm just stuck with my family here for for weeks and weeks so i drive you know up there through topanga canyon go down the bobsled run to his house and uh what what do we start talking about well how are you making your mask <laughs> exactly that the mask conversations begin and i i just finished dig i just I just finished backfilling the ruts from the mud from where you parked when you were here <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah no it, it was nice to have a visitor um it's pretty unusual right now it's actually always unusual to have a visitor where i live but uh that was particularly unusual but it, it was fun and i got some things to show off like tonight i got the dan dropped off the vanguard v4 so i'll be using that mic tonight and uh it was it was fun to to, right. to and, meet in the flesh from six feet away <laughs> yeah well we did give each other the wuhan shake you know with you just use your foot the and, foot bump yeah <laughs> but that was fun it was good it's to see good. you well it's good to see all of you out there and uh we're here to help you with your voiceover career and your home studio and all that kind of stuff and uh pat freely will join us in just a second but if you've got a question for george or i or for Pat Fraley, who will probably leave you asking lots of questions like, what was that all about? Um, and we can uh, he can answer those questions a little bit later on the show. And if you want to give a question or ask a question, go into our Facebook uh, group where you're watching it right now. And uh, you can uh, ask that question right there, right now. Anyway. It's time to introduce our guest, who is joining us from somewhere in Hollywood. You know, I, he could be out on the street somewhere, but uh, joining us is somebody who has been at this business for a long time, uh, a great voiceover educator, a man of a thousand voices, and a pretty nice guy. Pat Fraley. Pat, how you doing? Where are you? You're over here. I'm under an o underpass at <laughs> 405. He's a little cold, but I'm all right. Excellent. Well, welcome, welcome to Voiceover Body Shop. Now we, we're officially. What are we re officially referring to him as, George? He's uh, uh, first. I wanted to call Pat Guest Zero, right? Because he's like one of the very, if not the 
first guest of our show ever, nine well, years I, ago. I called in. I know it wasn't the first, but I called in that day of that because I heard it out in the bunkhouse where I used to live. And I went, wow, I'll give him a call. And you actually put me on. For quite a long time, actually. Because yeah. I guess he had something to say back then. You know, I've always had something to say. I'm Irish. Writing is hard. Speaking is easy. <laughs> I would think so. So how has the stay-at-home situation affected Pat Fraley so far? Not at all. I mean, I, I've been at home my entire career. I mean, you know, oh, yeah, I'm the poster boy for wanting to leave the house, and I'd be in studios and stuff, but it, it's not the challenge it is for many of us out there. And I think that I can see the, the faces people are going through, through social media and stuff, which is anger, uh, humor, fear, depression. And I just wanted to say one thing very quickly, is that if you're not doing anything, that's probably fine. It's probably what you should be doing. And the difference is what you filled your life with. It. So if you're sitting around going, what was I? Uh, what am I now? Where am I going? It's okay. It's bound to be depressing because <laughs> most of us are. I mean, uh, we go, what, is this it? Is this all I got? But that's okay. There are other things you can do, and we'll get to that. So, so what have you been doing? Have you done anything different, though, to fill your yeah. time? Yeah. Well, besides, like, cleaning the grout, right. Um, well, I, I went through all my free lessons on my website and uh, on SoundCloud because we're at a stage where we have to have things free for people because, A, we don't, if we have money, we can't spend it. And B, if we have a little, we don't want to spend it because we don't know what's going to happen. And so that free things have to be available. Plus, they're encouraging. And then I've also been, of course, teaching my home study courses. I've got about 30 of them. So I have a lot of students around the world. And so I'm home making comments. So that's about it. How about you? Have you been out and about at all? Well, just, just to go see George the other day. Other than that, it's... <laughs> It's, it's hanging out in the living room, watching a lot of TV and, uh, you know, and hanging out out here and talking to lots of people all over the place. And it's actually good to connect with people because everybody's having these, these, you know, these coffee hangouts, like, right. you know, which, which are fun actually, because it's people I haven't right. seen for eons. Well, it's a unique experience for all of us to take a respite and go what's going on. And by the way, uh, it always reminds me, today I got hold of Phil Proctor, and uh, I told him a story that is sort of germane to this era. Uh, Lisa Ferris, my assistant, told me this about her grandmother when she was alive. And she said that every morning, her grandmother would wake up and make a to-do list for the day. And then she'd check everything off because she'd already done everything. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's such a good idea because... Anytime we're disappointed and get down, it's because of expectations not met. Well, all the expectations are from ourselves. So better to turn the television on than get all fatutzed. That's Yiddish, by the way. Notice that. Uh, shot it. Yeah. So for those of you who out there who don't know Pat, perhaps I should ask him, give us you know, the, the Reader's Digest version of who you are and how you've gotten to where you are at this particular point. Okay. You're originally from I, Seattle, right? Yes. Uh, when I was four years old, I started doing what I do now. Sometime along the way, I started stopped paying and they started paying me. And what I do is perform and teach. I was a kid that was next door and liked to play army and they loved to kill me because I was so good at dying. <laughs> I'd fall out and go, ah, and foam. And they go, they go, Oh yeah, that's cool. I go, okay, here's how you do it. You foam a little and say, ah, von Lieber. And that's good. And aren't you back? So it's the same thing. I, I literally have done the same thing. I, when everybody wanted to be a fireman or a, 
pilot or an astronaut. I just wanted to be a performer. And that's what I went about doing my entire life. So how did it drag you to voiceover? You, did you do theater or did you do on screen? And how did you find well, yourself I was a voiceover? Big, I, good question. I was a big white guy in Seattle. And the only time uh, then was to go to theater for, for me. So I went through theater all the way through, got a master's of fine arts at Cornell, emigrated to Australia, started doing Shakespeare. And then I bumped into voices. They didn't have a term for it then. This is the mid 70s. And uh, I was doing Shakespeare, you know, and I went in to do some kind of, you know, rat dog or something. And uh, they paid me the same as they paid Shakespeare for the week for a one session, which I liked a lot. And when I left, they went, oh, we like you. And I went, why? I said, oh, you're so big. We can't get the other actors to be that big. Well, that was it. Uh, within years, I went directly toward Hanna-Barbera because I was always good at being big characters, and I never have thought of doing voices. I always think of them as characters. And uh, if the modicum of success I've earned as a performer has to do with cheating. I could do the funny voices, but I acted. Yeah, that was that was one of the things I was going to ask you a little bit later on, but I guess we'll we'll sort of circle back to that. And the thing is, is that people think that just being able to do funny voices is what voice acting is all about, and it's not just the ability to do character voices. It's got to be more that that you can maintain that and act with that voice, right? Yeah. Well, let me demonstrate it. Okay. Say I got a character named Eddie Graffiti. And Eddie Graffiti is like a Joe Pesci. He's quiet and he's a little, he's from New York, but doesn't live there. So, okay, I do this voice. Hey, how you doing? It's good to see you, Dan. Although I'm too big right now, but okay. So that's a funny voice, right? But there's no acting. So what if I do this? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> um. Uh, I don't want to body on this, but I was thinking maybe if I, if I don't, I should probably kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, here's what I'm doing. My motivation for Eddie is he's gone to prison or he's been sequestered and he doesn't want to go back again. So he's very careful about lying. That's it. Yep. Acting. So acting. <laughs> So what happened is doing funny voices is very important. It's like when we see, um, I'm trying to think of something, Daffy Duck. When I, uh, I worked with Mel Blanc right, uh, back in the day. I, I loved Daffy Duck. Shut that high lateral left spin. Oh, I loved it. it. It dazzled me. That's the form, the high voice, the lateral lift. That. Then when I got in the studio with him, I heard or I felt how vain and arrogant he was when he portrayed Daffy. That's the content. That's the acting. So we're dazzled. It's the, forgive this old PC or on PC way of putting it, but that's the blonde in the room, which usually meant she got the attention. The brunette may be more attractive, but uh, yeah, brunette. No, form, dazzle right? Content interior. Excellent. Well, our guest tonight is, or this afternoon or whatever time it is, wherever you are, uh, is Pat Fraley, who is a well-known voiceover educator and uh, character voice actor. And uh, we're glad to have him. And if you've got a question for him, throw it in the chat room uh, so we can ask him that question in just a little bit. Uh, is Pat Fraley, who is a uh, well-known voiceover educator and uh, character voice actor, and uh, we're glad to have him. And if you've got a question for him, throw it in the chat room uh, so we can ask him that question in just a little bit. So you know, we've seen this huge increase in the numbers of, of voice talents explode in the last few years. And I'm going to throw this out as just a real general question, but what advice do you have to people who think this is a good career choice? Well, that's, uh, uh, two things come to mind. Uh, someone said, if you can do anything else besides perform, do. <laughs> yeah. But putting that aside and say you just have to be a performer, as I did, 
then there's a lot of competition. And the perverse part is that casting and producers and directing people, they want bold, confident, aggressive people. Good luck. They got stuck with us, performers. The good, because Dan, George, I'm not bold, I'm not confident, I'm not aggressive, but I'm playful. And we're all playful. And, uh, you know, uh, rejection, it means nothing to me. I mean, I eat that for, for cereal with sugar on it. I mean, I got over that years ago, so I don't care. You know, I always tell myself, and I'll tell all of you, why not? They're already not casting you. <laughs> so you need to be aggressive, certainly with auditions and work. You never hear any stories about anyone, and I've never met anyone that's successful at what we do that hasn't broken rules. That's what we do. We do things wrong, and that's what they want. They don't want the best because anytime you give a human being a choice of three things they won't go for the best they go for good and different and that's what i am i'm good and i'm beyond good and that's another thing and i'll give me 30 seconds there's a whole bunch of good people out there there's lots of good people let's call good 80 percent excellent is 90 it's, it's a little above good, but that's why we know how to pronounce Zellweger and Malkovich. They're excellent. And finally, good needs to be sold over and over again. Excellence sells itself. Good point. Why do you think that people don't get that voice acting is acting? I mean, that we get so many people saying, well, I can just, I can just read this stuff and, and things like that. And that's when we usually run into people who are voice overacting. Well, I'll tell you why. It's because people that don't understand that acting is important uh, look at what dazzles the public and the audience, and that's the exhaust fumes of uh, actors or performers, and that is emotions. And so they go for playing emotions. Like, uh, for example, uh, say I've got a line like, uh, I told you scrawns to get out of here. Now, it says on the script, angry. So let me play that angry. I told you scrawns to get out of here. Now, here's me playing an action. That's an acting term. And my objective is to irritate the person I'm talking to or diminish them. So I'm going to play an action to diminish them. I told you scrawns to get out of here. Once again, I told you scrawns to get out of here. Now, what you get is me angry, but you get it more specific. And it is a bit quieter, as good acting usually is. Good. So that's why. People don't get that. You know, we I mean we hear from well, people all the time that it's like, well, I I want to be a voice actor. If you want to be an actor, and I dis and I discovered this in going to a few, you know, actual on-screen auditions, it's got to be in your gallbladder to want to do this. This is it's well, that, really that tough goes work. back to the yeah that goes back to do anything but this. Right. But if you're stuck with being an actor, by the way, you don't need training to be a good actor. What you need is a heart for the other player. You need to be able. To, in your mind, said, I'm going to affect the other person or the audience or whomever you're dealing with. That's the difference right there. So if you got that, you're, on, you're, on, you're, you're holding yourself in good stead. Addie just doesn't want to be caught, <laughs> you know, right? That's the difference when Addie is being Addie and without anything underneath, you know. And that's why a lot of, a lot of coaches talk about doing improv and stuff like that, because that's really, really important for learning how to listen to other people and respond yes. to them. Dan, you're so correct. And the big problem is that we align improv with comedy. I mean, when I see whose line is it anywhere, which is in reviews now, I just want to go out and sell shoes. <laughs> Those guys are so good. Robin Williams, Jim Carrey. But that's comedy. True improv isn't comedy. 
It's using your own words because the assumption that Sandy Meisner made and people that Vielo Spol and people that taught improv early was that your words are easier to say than other people's. All right. Once again, our guest is Pat Fraley. We're talking about learning how to be a better voice actor. And again, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room. You have a pile of courses. You were mentioning earlier that you have like over 30 courses, some of which I've actually taken. Um, and, you know, you've got, you know, everything from character voices, audiobook narration, and commercial copy. What does it take? Because I've worked with a lot of coaches. What do you think it takes for to teach this properly? What makes a good voiceover coach? I don't know about a coach. I'm a teacher. A te or a, a good coach. teacher, yeah. A coach teaches specific skills that address the discipline. A teacher teaches non-specific skills. Oh, a few specifics, uh, you know, thrown in there. But that's the difference. And I, I think what makes a good teacher is a desire to be in the learning business, not the teaching business. It's not about my attitude. I love teaching. It's not about me aggrandizing myself and being better than my my teach, my students. It's about me seeing them learn. It's another way of hiding, Dan. Because what I do is when I watch Nancy Cartwright or another private student like Dan, uh, Brad Garrett, or other, I see my work in their work. Now, I'm never going to be, uh, uh, you know, Nancy Cartwright or Brad. I'll never be uh, her age or his height certainly, but I get to high and go, yeah, oh yeah, I taught them that. So that, that kind of makes a good teacher. As far as what I teach, uh, it costs money. And these days, uh, things have to be free as well. Some people have the money, some people don't. Some people have money, they don't want to spend it. We don't know what's going to go on. So I do have free, free stuff when you want to hear about that fast. You have to give me 30 seconds though. All righty. Okay, so let's go back to character voices for a second here, because you know, so you were saying earlier, it's a matter of you know being able to maintain a character. How do you create a character? What's 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 your process for for doing that sort of thing? Okay, there's two different process. I usually start with the form, the outside, just like uh, Robert De Niro starts with. Uh, a hat, Dusty Hoffman shoes, Michael Meyer, that's outside in. So you start outside. You know, I thought Robert De Niro would have started inside out, but he doesn't. So I start with the sound. So um, I'll use that example of Theater Graffiti. He, that was a producer who owed me money. His name was Jim Tarry. <laughs> and so I said, well, he won't pay me, so I'll do his voice for years and make a lot of money off it. <laughs> well, or a crank. Well, just think of the outside. Well, with a wonderful day, so the universe is shredded. Well, it's strange. It's a very odd thing. And then what happens is God gave me a gift of being able to play these big characters and fill them. That's the acting, the form part. But most people don't start that way or could do it inside out. And here's a a brief uh, example. Say I'm doing a professor who's a big, large Indian man, India Indian, and he has a line like, uh, when I told you we would not study the Civil War in this class, I, said, I meant we would not study the Civil War. Well, for me, th the danger is I start with the form, so he's big and he's Indian, so I've got that done. And so I do the line with a kind of a uh, Arrogance, like when I told you we were not going to study the Civil War, Missy, I meant we were not going to suffer the, suffer, study the Civil War. Well, that's just general. But when I think about how Pat Fraley diminishes people, I kind of get patronizing and make other people think that they might be not as bright as I am. So if I take me, because you always have to have to have a little bit of truth in everything, and I put on the form slowly. 
Well, it starts with me patronizing Dan Leonard because you don't know really what you're doing. And then I lowered the voice and I add the dialect and then I'm ready to say, when I told you we would not study the civil war in this class, Missy, I meant we would not study the civil war. You see how it's got the form, but now it's got some life? That's it. But personally, again, I go from the outside, but try to rein myself back from jumping. Makes sense. You kind of like go full throttle, and then you you, you rein it back until it starts to feel real, right? Right, George, because uh, I'm like every other actor. I just want to paint the picture. But I have to rein myself back and go, where's the inside? Because, you know, we have this garden of deception. And inside, like any good con artist, you have one seed of truth. So you have somewhere to point when you get caught. No, see, I'm being honest. Well, that's the same thing as performing. We have this huge garden that we plant and grow. But one little teeny thing, it has to be true about everything you do. Just like when, when I did Krang, uh, this whole sound of talking backward. Like this, talking backward. I learned in the fourth grade. Come on. <laughs> but when I, when I auditioned for the role, I remembered that when I got mad at my boys, and, and Renee and I had four boys in five years. So they were everywhere. You know, it was like a casting call for the village of the dam. They had no features. <laughs> I mean, we had them so fast, right? Yeah, uh, and so uh, I would get mad at one of them. I go, "Pappy, what are you doing?" Oh, do oh. And I'd get heartburn. Well, heartburn you can't do, you know, all the time. I mean, perform it because it's a it's a burp sort of right. But I, 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 I could do that. Well, I knew that would give me time, so I decided to talk certain words backwards. So I go, "Fine, this is what I get for surrounding myself with idiot." And so that aspect of it came from my own, the truth. Plus, you'll love this, Dan. If you scrape off all of this, the stuff I do as Krang, you get a Jewish mother who's always <laughs> funny. Like this. I'll do it with Krang than without. So this is what I get for surrounding my job with idiots. Yeah. Right? So this is what I get for surrounding myself with idiots. But nobody knew. <laughs> it, it works. So much crap on top of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it, it and learning those layers is is really really important. Once again, Pat Fraley is our guest. If you got a question, hey, how often do you get a chance to talk to Pat Fraley in real time? Ask your questions in the uh, the Facebook chat, and uh, we'll be happy to have him answer that. Um, one of the courses you teach is in audiobooks, and I know we have a lot of uh, a lot of audiobook narrators that tune into this show. Uh, and I think I I think I took Million Dollar Read. Is that the name of that course? It was a long time ago. Oh, it was, and it's a book. But I, I but Scott Brick, who's a narr great narrator, and Absolutely. I teach together. Have, we've taught together ten years, and we have something called an audiobook major, which is five courses that are offered with a certificate of completion. It's a big thing. But I teach all sorts of $300 ones, which are now 250 right now, uh, uh, if you mention this program. And audiobook narration, audiobooks, curiously enough, is one of the few genres of voiceover that's not being affected. Why? No auditions or their MP3 auditions. Uh, Audible is like a monopoly. It doesn't slow down writers. They're at home anyway. And so they can go, we can record at home and get it up and be paid. So it's not bothered to the extent of video games, animation, ADR, all the other genres. So it's a pleasure. And you know what? It's the, it's the ballet of voiceover. In as much as like when I took acting, I took ballet. It's not like I wanted to be a ballerina, honestly. It was more like... Why, how can you get a blister there, you know? But I found that I could open doors more efficiently. It made me articulate physically. And I think audio, if you do an audiobook, man, can you do any other genre? 
You're doing characters. You're flip flopping. You know, I did Huck Finn. I had 91 characters and 34 dialects. A workout. Jeez. Yeah. How long did it take you to do that one? Well, I have a reading disorder and have had all my life. So I had to produce everything I've done darn near. I took two and a half months in the studio. Ah. When I told that to the publisher, she she was so upset. She said, don't talk to me. Don't tell me that. But that but I made money on it. See, that was the, the other thing. I had to make a circumstance to go in and do only two hours at a time because I'm hopeless. And I got a reputation by hiding that. And after about 10 or 15 years in Los Angeles, I finally said, look, I can't finish a sentence without making a mistake. What do you do? Fire me? No, but I hit it. Once again, our guest is Pat Fraley, and uh, time to ask your questions. We're going to take a quick break here, and we'll be right back with him and your questions here on VoiceOver Body Shop right after this. A little this more vodka. Latin lover Love narrator that. from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the VoiceOver Body Shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Well, hey there, Hero. We interrupt the award-winning shenanigans of VoiceOver Body Shop for this public service announcement. $1.5 billion. That's how many students there are in the world. Primary, secondary, college, university. $1.5 billion. And that's how many were sent home several weeks ago, along with the 90 million teachers and professors who teach them. And as they left, those teachers and professors were all told by their principals and deans, hey, keep teaching your classes from home, okay? Yeah, you know how to do that, what, that Facebook Live thing and that YouTube and that Zoom thing? You know how to do that, don't you? Sure, everybody does, except many of those teachers don't even know where to start. What camera to use, what microphone to use, how to set up lights, how to use Zoom. And what makes online classes different from in-person classes? But I do. I know how to do that. I've been doing that for years, and I thought, well, maybe I can help. So I spent day and night for the past few weeks putting together a course on how teachers can do all that. And I figured, uh, you know what, I'll sell it for 49 bucks. Anybody can afford 49 bucks, right? But then, at the last minute, I decided to do something different. I decided to set aside the money and give it away for free. So now through May 6th, any teacher can have the course forever for free. And I've got a favor to ask of you. If you're a teacher, or if you know a teacher or two, and with 90 million in the world who doesn't know a teacher or two, would you let them know about this? The course is available at teachyourcourseonline.com. And I'm going to ask Dan and George to make that link available on the VOBS website and maybe mention it a time or two on the air and in the notices that they sent out. Would you guys do that for me? Okay, great. The course again is at teachyourcourseonline.com. Help me help teachers be heroes at home as well as in the classroom. That's teachyourcourseonline.com. Thank you very much. As a voice talent, you have to have a website, but what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? 
go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem, VOBS.TV. Yes, we are back with Pat Fraley here on Voice Over Body Shop. We were just having a fascinating discussion during the break there. I think maybe we should carry on with that one a little bit. Okay. Uh, about microphone technique. Because yeah, well, I've seen you do things with you know microphone technique, and people don't under a lot of people don't seem to understand that it's like a human ear, and you don't you don't you can work the mic, but there's more to it than that. I mean, create right. a dimension well, with it. There's a couple of things. First of all, if you're audio only, like with a radio commercial or something, an audition especially, you can use mic technique when you get the job for animation, video game. A little bit uh, you can do on audiobooks, not a lot. You can't do a lot. But look at this, you know. Bye, Barbara. I hate her. Or uh, how about this? AT&T, reach out and touch someone. Now, you hear the touch was a little quieter and closer. That's why when you get closer to the mic, you build up what's called proximity effect, and it fattens the bass signal, and you don't get caught. So there's things you can do, and you and you know how you learn? You mess around at home. Go out and play. And, and, and also, by the way, in audio books, um, listen to this. He walked in the room and talked to Barbara. He was thinking, she looks beautiful. I don't know what to say. He turned away and said, uh, hi. <laughs> See, the convention for thinking is getting quieter, but it shapes what the author has written. Yeah, and that inner voice sound, it sounds more familiar exactly. when yes. it's kind of warmer. And it sounds warmer when you get a little bit closer. That's correct. Not only is it quieter, but it's a little warmer because of what I mentioned, the proximity effect. Right. I, right. I figured you boys would love that. Yeah. That I knew that word. Explaining the physics oh, yeah, to no. it is a little more difficult, but. We, we teach the rules, right? Like, right. you know, start this far away and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> and once you really learn the rules and you know how to get really great sound, then you can start really playing with it and right. start. By really, the way. You know, you've got to start in the right spot. There was an engineer at Hanna-Barbera that swore that every time Mel Blanc came in, he would do this with a mic, right, to get to distance. Why? Because sometimes, you know, back in the day, they used to use ribbon mics. And if you yelled into a ribbon mic, you could break it. And he said, he swore that Mel Blanc would come in and they were using, I mean, sure, one oh whatever, you know, $100 mics drive a nail in and then record five hours. But he would do that. And he said that he never had to change his level in the control room, that Mel Blanc would compress his own voice. He'd go, he'd go, I told him, hey, what are you doing? What are you talking about? And he would do it inside. Isn't that a trip? Yeah. He, he was, That's he was skill. The yeah. That yeah. is insane amounts of skill. Yeah. George, we've got lots of questions for you to ask from our, our voluminous audience out there. Why don't we start off with some of those? Yes. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, first one I see on the list here is from Denver Colburn Risley or Risley. That's a good actor name right there. Really? Um, just starting at ACX, actually, or doing ACX books. Um, is, it, is it good form to ask potential clients for feedback when submitting auditions? No, uh, you never ask. You never ask after you do an audition. Our job is to create wonderful auditions. Why? Because we get one out of a hundred jobs. 
Otherwise, you're just sitting around. You do fantastic, aggressive, interesting, get attention auditions, and then you let it go. Keep it because you'll forget it so you can remember it. But don't ask, don't ask uh, for feedback from anybody except a buddy of yours, a bunkie who likes your work. And never ask from somebody you like that doesn't like your work. Interesting way to approach it, I guess. Good point. I never asked my wife, what do you think of this? Well, you no. know, you could do this or you could. <laughs> no, I never ask for an A. Because she'll go, it sounds yang yang. She'll go, well, you sound like yang yang yang. That's what I get. Sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like yang yang yang. <laughs> oh, oh, God. How long have you been married, Dan? 25 years. 42 for me. I was dating her when I was 19. Uh, <laughs> I had no hope. All right, another one. This one's from Jeff Holman. Um, do you edit your own audiobooks? And if so, do you use any kind of plugins like RX7? Or if not, when did you decide to farm out your editing? So if you're recording an audiobook, does that ever happen? Do you have to do the production yourself, Pat, or do you farm that out? I learned how to edit by editing Huck Finn so I wouldn't kill myself. I got home from working I was so bad when I put it together I went well that's not bad um I don't edit myself I do I rarely do books anymore I teach mainly but you farm out just like when you create a beautiful studio with all these plugins and gorgeous digitizer and mics when you have the money you don't farm out until you have the money or you you farm out until you get money it depends on if you can get an editor that's uh, low cost, then you farm it out because time is money. It's confusing, but that's my best answer. Yeah. Well, as we, as we like to say, you don't you don't buy great equipment to get work. You work to get great equipment. Amen. But with editing, it's a little weird, isn't it, Dan? Because if you don't have money, then you get an editor from the outside. Um. And if you do have money, you get them from the outside. I don't know. Well, it depends. It depends on how much work you're getting. I mean, if you're like you know, you're getting booked doing a lot of books and stuff like that, you're really going to have to have an editor. Editing an audio book is you know that's part of the things about audio books because it's high effort and it's pretty much low reward unless you're working with a a major publisher. Uh, and right, so it 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 depends. But if you can learn how to edit. By doing audiobooks, you can become very valuable to other people who are doing audiobooks because that's right. a really good skill to have. There's no real clear answer, but one thing is important. And Rudy Gaskins in New York came across money recently, and we, we kind of tapped into it. And my advice is to always ask for twice as much as what you'll settle for. They may ask for, or say, no, that's too much, but you'll make more than you thought you would. And no one ever got fired for asking too much money. What happens is you get less money and they treat you better. Boom. Excellent point. Yeah, Drop the mic. People who pay the least are always the worst to work for. Yeah, oh, except boy. for you guys. You should work for free for me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I'll love you a lot. I'll hug you. That's what we do it for, <laughs> the hugs. Right. Well, then, all, then the thousands of dollars that I've paid both of you don't really matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you're not saying anything. <laughs> trying, I'm trying That's to count word. the thousands there. Anyway, um, Jeff Holman also asks, by the way, Jeff's helping us out with the show tonight in the chat room. Thanks, uh, Jeff. Great, Jeff. Um, do you do punch and roll recording or straight record when you're doing long form stuff? Okay, like let me books. speak to that. That's a really good question. Punch and roll benefits the producer for time. It does not benefit the performer. My buddy Scott Brick, who is arguably, yeah. who's arguing, the best voice, English-speaking voice in the world. He, he works more than anyone else and gets paid more. He's gone back to old school, which is like not punch and roll. 
granted, he's a good uh, reader, but he says when he gets going, he doesn't like to stop and go back and do technology and put that in because it's left, right side of the brain. So he says no. And here again, we get into this dilemma of, well, it would take longer to edit it uh, than punch and roll. But, you know, I kind of tend to agree with him. Just roll on, make a mistake, go back. E- keep yourself easy and keep going and then edit later. You know, I, I've been setting up people to record audiobooks for, I don't know, maybe 10 years. And I always posited that myself. So is that, is that, is that, is that a word? Posited. I like it. Go with it. Um, I've always posited that thought myself, which was it's the good. idea that a voice actor would have to interrupt their flow of acting to now do this mechanical yes. process of finding the locate point you know, and putting it there and then hitting a key, no matter how fast they can do it. Right. Totally. But it still takes you briefly out of that mode. That, you know? That's right. You want to get in the pocket and stay there in all mediums, by the way. Ad-libbing, you know, I, I think it's good when you do a cartoon, uh, you, you stay in character. I don't jump in and out. And by the way, posit means to present. So it's an excellent word. Thank you. I'm glad I used it correctly in front of this room. <laughs> um, John John Faust is just a fan. He says I can recommend Pat's courses as well. So thank thanks. you, John. Yeah. Um, Randy McCartan, a uh, question for Pat: How do you approach characters and audiobooks differently than the big voices in animation or video games? Excellent question. The lion's share of books are contemporary fiction. And the style is movie acting. It's it's really prime time, as Jenny McSwain says. And so you do less. For one thing, it's the longest medium of all genres. I mean, you're with somebody for five to eight hours, 13, even more. So you do less. Uh, but also there is a sense of reality that's needful for a lot of those books. Even if the book is melodramatic, like television is, most of all of the uh, golden age of television, which is now, is melodrama. But you don't play melodrama. You play natural or realistic acting. So, less. And I I once asked a wonderful Frank Moeller, who used to live in Topanga Canyon, by the way, uh, George, uh, I said, well, what about, uh, what about you know, those rough characters? He goes, oh, you mean this like that? Well, I save them for one-liners. So when he has a short character, he would do like the movies, Walter Brennan and these characters like uh, Edgar Buchanan. They had few lines, so they were a spice. But yeah. too much spice ruins the meal. Yeah, it's a spice, or it's like a, it's like you know, you, you have two gumdrops, but you eat twenty. It's like, whoa, it's terrible. You know, it's just totally. like a little drop of a bright splash of flavor. Except for Dan, who will eat a bag of gummy bears, but <laughs> that's another thing. Yeah, <laughs> there's certain kinds of gummy bears, though. <laughs> never eat the. By the way, never eat the sugar-free ones. I hear they cause a rather <sighs> big issue. Well, let's not get into it, but yeah, why bother? Exactly. Just go get a bag of real gummy bears, go in your car, park it, eat it, and die. <laughs> uh, John Faust actually has a question this time. Um, with characters sounding more natural and conversational, in quotes, um, in animation, what are your thoughts as a teacher with this? And do you see trends and patterns in what is in over the decades? Do you see these things repeat or do you see them coming or what do you, right. how do you feel about trends and stuff? I really got into audiobooks in the, in the late eighties. So I was at the get go at that time, performers read books over the eras. It, it has become perform them. So they're like little movies. And um, I forgot what I was going to say, John, what was the beginning of the question again, George? He was saying um, um, with characters sounding, uh, with this trend for characters to sound more natural yeah. and conversational yeah. and animation. 
What oh, are your thoughts? Okay, animation is all over the place. Now, yeah. let me give you the styles because because not only do you need text analysis, like you know who are the characters, where are they, and you know all the, the text analysis. I've added one. What's the style? Why? Because in this day and age, if you don't hit the style of a uh, project, the casting person won't play it for the producer. Why? Because producers no longer come from theater. They don't sit there and go, oh, he's wonderful. I'll bring him down 10%. It'll be fine. They go, oh, he didn't hit. That, that's not the style of a show. So here are the styles that you need to know. Because you can't ask your agent. They don't know. You can call Nickelodeon and ask, but good luck. You know, they don't get angry, but it's tough to get an answer here. At the top, prime, uh, prime no, um, wild and woolly, Hanna-Barbera. You know, crazy, like Krang, right? Then you go down to uh, an even plane, sitcom, and that's a term used for comedy, or melodrama, which is used for drama. And both those are the same as we are, except they raise the stakes. For example, if you use the cast of Friends, they're great, but if you put them in real life, they're a little bit too big. Or melodrama, if you took melodramatic characters, they'd be a little too dramatic. Then you go down to realism or contemporary fiction or movie acting or prime timing. That's it. That's all you hear. And, that's, and it has changed and gotten to better acting and more contemporary fiction in most all genres. All right, we're, we're running a little low on time. We have time for a couple more questions. But one of my questions is, is you got lots of stuff that's free. Tell us what people yes. can get. Well, as an encouragement and also because I've got nothing to do. <laughs> um, I, uh, if you go to patfreely.com, you'll find the menu at the top free. And that's a page of all free lessons. They're about two minutes, some are sketches, demonstrations like you've seen me do here. At the top of that free page, there is, uh, you can go to Pat Fraley's SoundCloud. If you go there, there's 50 free lessons in a row. Just pick what you want. And uh, so that's a way of progressing and get, going from good to excellence without paying any money out. And if you go for my home study courses and I'll give you a deal, you'll spend money less than coming into a session with me, but you know, 250 bucks. Yeah. I, you know, I think it's always important that people continue to study and really learn this craft and, and take courses like this and see, you know, see somebody's different approach to how, how you do these certain things. But Pat's courses are, you know, they're info packed and they're really cool to, uh, to read and listen to how he does certain things. So I'd highly recommend them. Well, I, I'm grateful. The other thing I love about teaching home study courses is my students send me an MP3 of their best work, not on the way, but here's my best shot. I listen personally and comment on it. So I think about it. And so I think it's more incisive to how we learn. Although I got to say, I, I can't learn anything. I can't teach. I've gone to one, one teacher in the last 40 years because I had I got up to here with teaching with me. So some people go, no, nah, forget it. But you do have to keep your eyeball out for what's going on if you don't. Absolutely. Well, Pat, thanks so much for being with us. It has been way too long since you've been on the show before, like nine years. Uh, so <laughs> We really appreciate you taking the time right now. And uh, not that everybody Any, doesn't have lots of time sitting around, but we're glad you're able to come. Any time out. for you guys. Dan, we've taught together much. I've hired George. By the way, he has all your money. I, yeah, I know. I gave it to him and said, give some to Danny. I don't know. It's under this floorboard. But anyway, so. I, I encourage people <laughs> to get their advice on what we do from you guys because voiceover is a unique subject. And, and you know... And Dan and I are so like-minded about how we go about uh, servicing the voice of our community, not singers or, you know, other people. That's different. Right. All right. Well, Pat, thanks for being with us. We really appreciate it. It's great to see you. And hopefully we'll all see each other in the flesh sooner or later. Yes. All righty. 
All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and George and I will be right back to rat re rack things in just a minute. So stay tuned. This is Anthony Mendez, and you're watching Voice Over Body Show. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. It's now time to talk about Harlan Hogan's voiceoveressentials.com. Now, today, Amazon Incorporated shipped its last PortaBooth Pro from their inventory. And as you know, the demand for many goods and services needed for those working from home has exceeded supplies. And both their Plus and Pro recording booths are no exception. Now, you may have also experienced long shipping times, even for audio equipment that's in Amazon's inventory. Now, VoiceOverEssentials.com, the manufacturers of the PortaBooth Plus and the PortaBooth Pro and Harlan Hogan Signature Series audio gear, is shipping now. And they have ample inventory of everything voiceover talent, podcasters, and broadcasters need to produce professional-sounding audio from home and on the road. So if you're in need of home VO studio gear, and now that's everybody, go on over to voiceoveressentials.com and see all the great stuff they have that's shipping now. Well, it's that time of the show where we get to talk about Source Connect. And wow, is this a time to have Source Connect? If you've been watching our show for quite a long time, I've been telling you guys over and over on almost every commercial that the time to get Source Connect is right now because you could be using it right now. You could be uh, having it up and running without spending a dime because you can get it set up as a 15-day trial. Because guess what? Almost every voice actor that has any, any kind of representation, uh, agents or whatever, are being told you should have Source Connect. Um, and as we've said before, having Source Connect can really just mean getting yourself set up with a free trial at source-elements.com and getting yourself up and running. Um, I'll just take a second to plug something as well that I've done. If you go to georgethetech.com, there is a Source Connect option in the tech uh, area, the VO tech help menu. Um, and I've just put together the, a video that might help a lot of you demystify how Source Connect is used, what Source Connect standard is. It's about an hour long. It's on YouTube Live, and you can check it out. And, you know, the folks at Source Connect really appreciated it, too, because there's a lot of questions about this thing and what it is. But you don't have to wait to get it. You don't have to wait to buy it. You can get it and get started using it right away. Just Source Connect standard. Get a 15-day free trial. Get yourself started. Watch the video so you feel like you're going into this thing, understanding how to use it and get up and running. If you get stuck, there's support. They have support, and I also supply support for Source Connect users, um, but we'll get you up and running one way or the other. Be ready to go. Um, when that client or that agent says you have to have it, you better have it. So Source Elements, we appreciate your long-standing support of our show. And we'll be right back to wrap it up right after this. Ooh, I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. And yes, we are back, and uh, Pat's always entertaining. He always has something good to say, and it's great to see him. And uh, we've been wanting to get him back on the show for a long time. 
but yeah, he's worked with obviously a, a lot of really amazing actors and pros. I didn't realize that he'd been coaching um, uh, Nancy Cartwright. Yeah, and Brad. Ago, I, I know he was good friends Brad with Brad Garrett. Garrett, and he's also good friends with with Ed Asner. And it's always usually you'll see them together. We've we've actually talked with them when they're. I, I got to help them produce a, a live class that he taught in a theater. You know, with with Brad Garrett one time many years ago. Yeah. And that was a that was a total blast. I'm sure. That was really cool. Absolutely. Uh, next week on this very show is Tech Talk number thirty. Believe it or don't, we're getting up there. And then uh, the following week we have Christine Aller, who is uh, she's basically an nice. A, a, a creative person's therapist. She she understands. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She understands how to deal with, you know, stress and these sorts of things and how to organize. And I think as we relieve ourselves of this isolation, I think she, it'll be a good time to have her on. Who are our donors of the week? Yes, we have some. And before I do the donors, I do want to mention that there is something. I'm going to mention it on the Tech Talk, too. But um, if you have a Mac... And all you Windows people can snicker, okay? You, we, we get enough digs in at Windows people. This is where you get to snicker at us. But if you're on a Mac and you are already running Catalina, that's 10.15, um, you want to probably avoid the next update, which Oops. may be too late for you if you have <laughs> automatic updates turned on. I don't know how many times we've mentioned it on the show, but you probably don't want to have automatic aut updates turned on on a production computer, but um, 10.15.4 reportedly on a, an article I found on techradar.com says it can maybe crash or destabilize your uh, MacBook. Um, apparently it's a MacBook thing, not Mac minis and other computers. But anyway, um, I won't bore you with a lot of details, but hold off, don't update to 10.15.4 Yet, I'm sure they're going to have a new update, 10.15.5 or something, or 4.1 or something. Um, at that time, do the update. But I'm sure, man, right now with them, everybody in the office trying to phone it in, you know, running this team, it's got to be a little bit challenging. So absolutely, stuff's going to slip through the cracks. All righty. Anyway, donors. Yes. Let's start with Uncle Roy, Martha Kahn, Mike Gordon, Don Griffith, Harlow Rodriguez, uh, Michael Kearns, Christy Burns, and Brian Roush. All righty. And you can I've donate those names show. many times. Yeah. Just, they just go to our main webpage, VOBS.TV, hit the donate now button and donate now. Uh, also, you can get on our mailing list and uh, we'd like to, we, our mailing list is growing. I want it, I want it to hit 700 before the end of this year. Maybe a thousand by the end of the year. Let's yeah, let's aim for let's aim for a thousand. I like that idea because we got way more many, way more than that of people subscribing on, on YouTube and stuff. And so Facebook uh, and all that. So you're yeah. all out there. We know you're out there. Anyway, uh, we need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials, Voiceover Extra, Source Elements, Boheroes.com, VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. And, of course, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live Webcasting. Jeff Holman on chat room duty tonight. And, of course, Sue Merlino trying, doing it from home and doing a great job. Yeah. We're, we she's, can't all be with each other, but we can get to be with each other, which is kind of cool. If you guys had any clue, if, as if it wasn't complicated enough to do this show now, Dan, Dan's in the studio making all the things, firing all the engines, getting everything running. <laughs> Getting everything logged in, and then Sue and I are both doing the jobs that we normally would do from uh, from remote. So it's absolutely mind-boggling. Yeah, and of course Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, we thank hey. Pat Fraley for being with us tonight. George, always a pleasure to see you. We you actually too, got man. to see each other this week, and uh, uh -huh. we're always glad to see you. And uh, we're here to help you with your home studios and with your voiceover career because if it sounds good, it is good. All righty. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. All righty.